Look at all of this. It's cold and dark and miserable. Welcome to Sweden in winter. This is a video about 10 more things I hate about Sweden. Last year, I posted a video about the top 10 things I hate about Sweden, and that made quite a few people upset. I think my favorite comment was that life must be pretty good if the weather is the major thing to complain about. And yeah, Sweden is a pretty good place overall. Except for the weather. But it's not perfect. Far from it. That's why I decided to list 10 more things I hate about Sweden. After this video, I will have listed 20 things that I hate, but if I for some reason missed anything, let me know in the comments. Winter is a lovely time in Sweden. As long as you don't have to travel anywhere. As soon as there's a bit of snow, all the trains and buses start to shut down. You'd think that people would be prepared for snow by now, but no. What? There's snow this year as well? In Sweden! Who'da thunk it? This year we've also had a very cold winter, with minus 40 degrees Celsius up north, so all kinds of transportation has broken down. I actually heard that many people got completely stuck up north in Sweden this winter because the plane stopped going and there were no trains and no buses. So extended vacation, I guess. I understand that snow is difficult to deal with. It's wet, it's heavy, it gets frozen. It's hard to keep cars and buses and planes going in the snow and the cold. But I still hate that winter always makes public transport go completely haywire in Sweden. Swedes pretend to be nice, but in reality they can be pretty nasty people. They like to say that they're tolerant of people learning Swedish, for example, but make a grammatical mistake and then you're in for a snide comment. They might say that they approve of different cultures, and sure they do, as long as these other cultures still uphold Swedish values and ideals. You need to behave like a Swede in Sweden, and you need to think like a Swede. If you don't conform with that, Swedes aren't openly hostile. Instead, they judge you with stares and barbed remarks, and they exclude you from society. Most Swedes are discreetly judgmental. They might hide it behind a fake smile and a joking comment, but don't be fooled. They're still judging you extremely critically for not fitting in. And that discreetly judgmental mentality is something I really hate about Sweden. Christmas has come and gone, and we're all looking forward to Easter now. At Christmas in Sweden, you have your traditional Christmas buffet with meatballs and herring and salmon and eggs and stuff like that. Then at Easter, you have your traditional Easter buffet with meatballs and herring and salmon and eggs and stuff like that. Then comes Midsummer, and guess what you eat at Midsummer? Of course, a traditional midsummer buffet with meatballs and herring and salmon and eggs and stuff like that. In Sweden, you eat almost the same food at every holiday. Other countries don't have this plague of herring-infused buffets or other recurring foods. It seems to be a very Swedish thing to always have this infernal herring and salmon at every major holiday. And I'm completely fed up with it. Swedish schools used to be good, then suddenly they weren't any longer. These last couple of decades, Swedish students have just performed worse and worse every year. Sweden has now regressed to the worst ever results in both mathematics and reading comprehension. We're also pretty sucky at science. Granted, we're still doing better than some countries like Austria, France and the Netherlands. And so far, at least, we are above average when comparing with the OECD countries. But if this downward trend continues, we'll soon be competing with Mexico, Costa Rica and Colombia for a jumbo spot at the list. And worst of all, there are tons of reports that Swedish kids are getting more and more stressed at school. 
In other words, we're putting more and more pressure on our kids, and we're getting worse and worse results. Something is definitely rotten in the Swedish schooling system. This isn't any old tree. This is Birje Jarl's oak, and it's 800 years old. It's as old as Stockholm city, in other words. It was almost torn down in the 1960s when they built the motorway, but they changed the plan so that they could let the oak stay here. That's something that I don't hate about Sweden, that we at least try to keep some memories of the past. Stockholm is a great place to live. It's a beautiful city of just about the right size, and many people want to move here. And that means that they have to have somewhere to stay. And that's where the problems start. Finding a first-hand rental in Stockholm is impossible. You have to wait for 20 years to find an apartment in the city. Buying an apartment in the city instead is extremely expensive. You have to pay millions of Swedish crowns just to be able to afford a shoebox at the side of the road. And the same goes for Gothenburg and many other cities as well. And the second-hand rental market is just insane. The prices are double or triple that of a first-hand rental. You can absolutely find somewhere to live in Stockholm if you can pay for it. But for young people, or for people without huge piles of cash, the housing situation in Stockholm is just insane. And that's something I really hate about Sweden. Imagine that you're out traveling and you get your hotel late in the evening. You suddenly realize that you forgot to bring some important stuff, like your phone charger, or a pair of socks, or you just want a Coke Zero. No problem, you'll just grab it at a night open store, right? Wrong, because you're traveling in Sweden, and here you'll have to wait until the next day, or possibly the next Monday if you're unlucky. Sweden has a distinct lack of a 24-hour culture. Everything closes down pretty early in the evening. Most stores are open from morning until early evening. But uh, wait a second, isn't that when everyone else is at work? If you need to buy a new set of underwear, because you, purely hypothetically speaking, couldn't be bothered to do your laundry, then you'll either have to rush out during your lunch break, or you'll have to try your luck at 5 p.m. when everyone else is trying to do their shopping. Or you'll have to wait until the weekend. This lack of a 24-hour culture is something I really hate about Sweden. Swedish healthcare has been called one of the best in the world, but I don't know why, because most Swedes hate it. Let's start with something positive. Swedish healthcare is free. Sort of. You still have to pay an administrative fee to see a doctor, and you also have to pay for your medication. So it's not completely free, but at least it's equal. Everyone has the same right to medical care in Sweden, regardless of social status or money. The problem is that you might have to wait a long time for that care. Sweden is actually ranked quite high when it comes to quality, but low when it comes to availability and self-determination. Medical staff is often overworked and underpaid in Sweden, and we just don't have enough nurses and doctors and ambulance drivers. The Swedish healthcare system has some really big problems, but at least we're not the US, so it could be worse. Something else that I hate about Sweden is Swedish dance music. I'm not talking about the music people dance to at nightclubs. No, I'm talking about the abomination called Dansband, Swedish dance band music. It's happy and upbeat music with jitterbug and foxtrot influences, and for some reason it's extremely popular in Sweden. Couples dance to it, and it's a style of music that became popular in the 1970s. 
It's almost exclusively listened to by middle-aged adults and very strange teens out in the rural areas of Sweden. Listening to dansband music is very binary. You either love it or you hate it. And I, for one, definitely hate it. Have you seen the smug bastard we have for a prime minister? The convenient thing about making a statement like that is that it's always gonna be true, regardless of which year you watch this video. And the same goes for all of our ministers and politicians in general. Sweden doesn't really have a big problem when it comes to corruption, but we do have a big problem when it comes to incompetent politicians. Half of all comments about local politicians on Facebook are negative, claiming that they're lazy and incompetent. To be honest, I'm surprised that it's just half of the comments. Now, some countries might have bigger problems than Sweden. Sweden isn't ruled by a megalomaniac dictator, for example, like Russia, or by a corrupt prime minister, like uh, most of Central and Eastern Europe. But Sweden still has a problem with career politicians whose primary skill set is uh, bending the truth in creative ways. They don't have PhDs or any skills from other occupations. They're just good at being politicians. Or wait, no they're not. They're good at telling everyone that they're good politicians and then screwing things up. And that's something I really hate about politicians in Sweden. Now we get to the top thing I hate about Sweden. Well, aside from the other top thing I mentioned in the other video. You've heard about the midnight sun in Sweden, right? If you're above the Arctic Circle, the sun never sets during summer. And even in the south of Sweden, it's extremely bright almost all night. Everyone loves Swedish summer. But on the flip side, everyone also hates Swedish winter because of the almost perpetual darkness. What time do you think this is? It's not evening, this is 11 a.m. No, I'm just kidding, but it could have been if it was up north. Above the Arctic Circle, the sun never rises during large portions of the winter, and even in Stockholm, you just get a few hours of daylight per day. It's dark until late morning, and it gets dark again in early afternoon, so if you have an office job, then you literally don't see the sun for several months. Many people get winter depression in Sweden, and even if you don't get depressed, you still get very tired. You lack energy, and everything becomes so… difficult. I don't think you can understand the Swedish darkness until you've spent a winter here. It's fun for a few days, but slowly, slowly it wears you down. The darkness in Sweden is overwhelming. It lasts for months and months, and it takes away all joy. The darkness is something I really hate about Sweden. And that's about it. This was my second list of things I hate about Sweden. I hope you found it interesting. Like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day. Now have a look at this video as well, up here in the corner. You need something more uplifting after this one.